President Muhammad Buhari appears to have transferred the control of the Special Intervention Program, SIPs, from the Vice President's office to a new ministry. Is this purely administrative or there is more fire to the alleged feud with the President and his vice? And from Boston, the homes of judges at some time in President Muhammad Buhari's administration, the President has now promised to increase funding for the judiciary. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. <music> President Muhammad Buhari seems to have confirmed the transfer of the control of the Special Intervention Programs, SIPs, from the Office of the Vice President to the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Development during his National Independence Day broadcast. Is there an ongoing feud between the president and his vice, Yamiyo Shibanjo? Well, joining me to discuss this are two gentlemen. Francis Chilaka, political analyst, thank, thank you. you very much for joining us. And a very familiar <laughs> face, Emeka Mba, thank you very much well, for joining us, social commentator in this program. All right. The country has a new ministry. And the purpose, according to the president, is to institutionalize his administration's efforts with homegrown okay. uh, feeding program, NPAR, trade of money, and all of that. Let me start with you. Do we really need a ministry for this? Well, um, if you look at the way things work in Nigeria, you find out that it's either we're having a committee, we're having a parastotal, or we're having a ministry. And um, I think that to a large extent, um, setting up ministries, other than the fact that it creates employment and settlement for the boys, so to say, um, it has also helped to streamline a lot of things. At least we know where, who to hold responsible for anything that goes wrong. So uh, for me, creating the ministry is good if it will do that which it is created for. That takes me to my next question. How effective do you think this new ministry will handle the very key areas that was highlighted in the, in the name yeah. itself? Um, what is it again? Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Development. These are very key issues yeah. in this country. Will the ministry be able to live up to the mandate? Um, I think, you know, it goes to the political will. Everything we've seen in, in governance, in my experience, has got to do with the political will and the strength of the principle. And if they want it to work, it will work. Uh, you know, government is most effective when there's political will and there's political strength coming from the highest office. Um, so in my view, I think it's, a, it's, it's good that it's, uh, like Chileka said, that it's been institutionalized. It's very, it's very important. I, I, I don't think that this is something fundamentally uh, new or that is different. I mean, most countries in the world have social welfare schemes. And it's always good in the US you have the Department of Human Services, who, you know, and they do set things like this. Um, in the UK, you've got a home office, you've got um, health and human services. So there's nothing wrong with having a ministry. I think the core of it is, will they do what they've been asked to do? And will they get the monies to do what they've been asked to do? And will it, will it not be susceptible to political corruption? Because that's another thing. So it's been used, it, it, hopefully it will not be used for that. But on the surface, I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a great development. Okay, well, this used to be the purview of the vice president, yeah. the SIPs yeah. and all of it. And now we have a new ministry. Some persons are saying it's a sort of confirmation of the fact that there is an ongoing feud between the president and his yeah. vice. Let me stay with you. What is your reaction to that? Well, I mean, other than what, we, what we've read in, in the newspapers, the, the different conjectures that have come up, the different... Um, sort of narratives that you read about on social, especially on social media. Um, but, you know, the office of the vice president and the president you have said there's not much to, to that sure. story. But when you actually, which is funny, when, when there's an attempt to deny, 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 in fact, people will say that um, the more people deny something, the more truth there is to, to, to that thing. So I, 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 I think my my gut feeling is that there's some, something is definitely amiss. Um, I don't know whether it's been engineered to, to embarrass the vice president um, because there's been talk about his political ambitions um, you know, going forward. 
you know, it, it's funny, we just came through an election, you know, this year, the year hasn't ended, and a lot of talks going towards 2023 and all of that, um, which is really sad, um, but I, I, I think this is politics. We're in the land of politics. <laughs> a lot of, I mean, if there's anything Nigeria is people ask, what is Nigeria's business? Politics. Nigeria's business is politics. Do you share the same thoughts? Does this have anything to do with 2023? Because already we actually talked about it on this program. There are posters of the likes of Tinubu or Shomole already out for 2023. It's like they're prepping ahead of time. Does this have anything to do with that as well? Well, I would like to start by saying that we all know that um, the office of the vice president, the office of the deputy governor, these are just there. They're not, they don't have any functions, so to say. They, really? Yes, yes. It's whatever the president asks them to do. They are more like spare tires. And you know what happens to a car. You have to use your spare tire. So I, I, for me, first and foremost, I want to say that I would not join voice with those who are saying the, the responsibilities have been taken away from the vice president because this same um, responsibilities were handed over to him yeah, by Mr. President. Yeah. So Mr. President has the right to decide whether to take them. But now you have a ministry. So what, I mean, that would be duplication. First thing, let me, let me put it this way. It is totally wrong. For me, it is totally unacceptable that Mr. Vice President will be the one going from market to market distributing money to people. It is totally, totally, it belittles the office of the vice president. Well, that, that, the, 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 the argument for, from the supporters would be that that shows that they are in touch with the reality. They are not, you know, distancing themselves mm -hmm. from the poor. Sometimes you say if you go close to the poor, you, you may, I, I don't know, it's contagious, so to speak. No, but, but this is the <laughs> vice president, one of the highest officers, you, trying to mingle with those that are poor. You, you need to understand, like you said, Nigeria's business is politics. We just finished that election. How many of these governors that won election have you seen frying Akara in the open? How many of them have you seen roasting corn? So, you see, these are gimmicks which, they use, which politicians use to deceive Nigerians to win an election. But for me, I would say, it's like having a managing director and an executive director, and then the managing director is asking the executive director to go and start giving out money to people. Going to the market does not show, does not mean that you're getting close to the people. There are other ways in which you get close to the people. Town hall meetings. But the problem in our country, in our system, is that even the vice president going to the market, 80% of people around him are security men. So how does he relate with the poor people? Good question. But then again, some would say that if, uh, having um, gone to um, interact with the people, he, he has a first-hand experience of what the situation is. When you go and interact with people that you have already prepared on ground to interact with, that is not the people. You want to interact with the people, wake up. You don't need security men as a vice president. Go out, reach out to the people. During the campaigns, don't they go to these people. Don't they shake hands with them. So why must you now carry cameramen and all of that because you're going to give somebody 5,000, 10,000? No, no, no. But my point, no. the reason for bringing that up is because you said it belittles the office of the vice it does. president. It does. Uh, can you explain a little more? What I mean is, this is a responsibility somebody else should have done. Not the president. Not the vice, not president. vice president. Yes. Okay, let, let's look at another mm -hmm. issue. While you were talking, it came to my mind, and that's the fact that portfolios have been assigned for the ministers that we have now. So... The leadership of this new ministry, where would it be coming from? Would a minister that's already assigned a portfolio be pulled out? Or how do you propose, uh, do you think that this new ministry will be managed? I, I think, uh, again, it's the pre is president's prerogative. Um, you know, I mean, um, the president gets to decide who he feels that is best suited and able to do the job. Um, and in this instance, I'm not quite sure who that portfolio has been assigned to. Um, but my feeling is that um, giving the importance, I mean, because it, 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 it is, appears to me at least to be strategically important to take something that the office of the vice president used to do and t to take it away from the office of the vice president and assign it to a ministry means that it's something that is obviously very 
very close to the heart of a president, and therefore the president sees this as something that's strategically important. So obviously, whoever heads that ministry must be someone that is, again, strategically close to the president and, 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 and has some confidence, or the president has confidence in that person's ability to do the job. Um, and, and that's my feeling. But, you know, again, you know, uh, I, I have to re-echo what um, Chilaka says. I, 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 I did think that at the time when um, the, the vice president was going around doing this, I thought, personally, this is political. You know, it, it, it was for a political purpose. Um, I, so I wouldn't quite say that it was, to, it was belittling his office. I thought that it was moving towards a political end, which was, you know, we had an election coming at that point in time. It was good to touch base with the, with the common folk and appear to be, you know, so it was political. Poli politics will make people do strange things, and that's the reality of, of, of okay, Let's, let's yeah. look a little bit. Um, um, the special intervention program, yeah. the SIPs. Um, in his speech this morning, he talked about, let me read it as I put it here, um, ongoing 500 billion naira so special intervention yeah. program that continues to target vulnerable groups through the homegrown school feeding program, NPAR, job creation, yeah. loans for traders and artisans, conditional trans, uh, cash transfer to the poorest family and social housing scheme. The president has been in power for four years this is now the next four years how would you assess this SIP's impact on Nigerians <laughs> let me let, let, let's look at it from this point you you mr. president wakes up from sleep he has good ideas and he puts it on the table but something is lacking and that is why people are not feeling it you cannot implement something without data we do not have a database of Nigerians to start with. We don't even know how many we are. We just, we just rely on what they say United Nations tells us tomorrow we're 180 billion, we're 180 million and all of that. We need to have a data. Okay, even uh, if we don't have a data. Let me finish. Let me, okay. You need to have a data of who are employed, unemployed, school children, and all of that. So that you know when you are doing a program for a particular thematic area. You know you're catching the right people. But the way it is, you know, going from one market to another and giving up money, mm. what is the data? What data is being used to do that, this? That's not the only thing I, I listed. You also have the NPAR scheme that has provided jobs for Nigerians. You also have the loan, um, I think, um, direct transfer of monies to the poor people. Uh, you also have the homegrown feeding, the much touted <laughs> homegrown feeding program. So the special intervention program comprises um, some other issues other than, you know, giving money. So the, the, the end power, yes, we know it's, it's people have been employed, so they, so they say, and they're earning 30,000 a month. But if you look at it, you ask yourself, with all these interventions, why is it that on a daily basis, if you follow um, the EFCC on their website and all of that, on a daily basis, they are arresting close to 200, 300 young Nigerians who are involved in 419. I think there's a bigger... You know, so there's something wrong. I, the, I think the, for me is, is, look, you know, in government, there's always, you always have this thing of unintended consequences. You've had um, a government that, through... In, in you know is good intentions have often resulted in, in very poor um, economic results for the country you know a lot more people are out of work there's a lot more suffering there's a lot more you know um, difficulties economically so this is so what you're doing is patching I think the most important thing for government is to be careful about taking the right economic decisions which will grow the economy that's so this this thing of you know the SIP the the feeding they're good they're actually quite good but I think the most important thing is actually to make the right policy decisions the right economic decisions which will grow the economy and that will have a multiplier effect and but, it will but, mean but a less not, people not to interrupt you but we must start from somewhere and the government no, the, has chosen from, to start no, you with cannot, the SIP no you cannot start from the symptoms that's very, uh, you know, you it's don't go to the hospital. When you go to the hospital and say, I've got fever, they'll find out, what is it, malaria? Is there a parasite in your body? What is the cause of your illness? You don't, you don't start giving me Panadol, because that's what it is. 
You, you know, you, so we, we live in a country that is impatient for answers. Let's not forget so that. So politically, it's good. I agree with that. That's a good thing. But it, it is, it's, 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 it's like putting plaster. Okay. It's, it's put in place. So the most important thing is deal with the economic foundations of the country. Deal with create an economic policy which, which incentivizes growth, which allows for growth to happen. When that growth happens, it will pull a lot more people out of poverty. Okay? And I think that's the most important thing. But given the absence of that, the policies in that direction, then the SIPs are welcomed. That's my view. <laughs> well, if, if you, you, you don't um, seem to be all, you know, uh, beaming with joy uh, with, about the SIPs. No, so I, don't, what, I, don't, I don't. What, what other strategy, in your opinion, would have been more appropriate to achieve this same purpose for the government? We're talking about school, feeding of children in schools. Have you gone to look at the schools? Where are the schools? Have you looked at the schools? Do they have books? Do they have learning aids? And government is busy telling me they are feeding the children. What children are they feeding? You're feeding children that are, that are learning under the tree, in uncompleted building. We saw what happened in Delta State over that small yeah. girl. We saw the kind of school she, she, she was attending. And so what is the problem is that the government should sit down and create structures that will run on its own and create employment for people. Giving somebody 5,000 Naira, giving somebody 10,000 Naira does not provide for that person. Government said they have 50, 500 billion. Do you know how many factories 500 billion can set up in this country? And these factories will run well in such a way that it will become a multiplier effect. It will be, keep employing more people. So the government must begin to think out of the box. We're in the 21st century. We're no longer in those days where you know, people put money inside the um, comb and cover it. No. We're talking of cashless society. So government should think towards what do we need to do? What do the children want? The children are not, they're not, the children, Nigerian children don't want food. They want to learn. They want an environment where they can learn, just like other children in other developed countries. Not, not to be a clog uh, in the wheel right now. The, 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 the government has just four years. And in that four years, people expect to see results. Now, are we tackling the issues right, focusing on what the government is doing? Because the government, a lot of persons who say, is playing to what they feel the people need. As citizens, are we doing enough to redirect the government to doing something a bit more mm. foundational than, you know, this cosmetic... Has the government diver? asked the people what they want? The government we have in Nigeria, successive government has always been, they come, they decide what they think the people want. They've not asked the people what they want. Mm. People are talking of referendum. People are talking of restructuring. I'm sipping my tea and I'm listening <laughs> you know. to this conversation. So, so, <laughs> There's something you said, you used the word cosmetic. And I'm glad you used that because that's, it appears to be, you know, so you have a more structural problem. It's a structural problem. The economy is facing a structural problem. So having to paint the building <laughs> to replaster it, mm -hmm. it's not the issue. The issue is, I mean, it's not, what I mean is this, it is good to put a new coat of paint. But unless you address the, the very basis, the foundational issue on how an economy grows, what are the things you need to do? No, you know? I, I think you, you're missing a little. I know you, you, you have to answer that. But there's a part of the question yeah. that I actually came up with. And that is the role. They are trying to feed what they perceive to be what the people want. But they created the problem. So this is it. You've had policies over the last four years which has led to more people, economic policy, fiscal and monetary policies which has led to more people being out of work. Okay, you've not put infrastructure, you've not faced education as a fundamental priority intervention. This is my point. You've not said, okay, we're going to build more schools, we're going to, we're going to improve the schools that we have, we're going to employ more teachers, we're going to make sure that the teachers we have have better standard, better trained, we're going to make road infrastructure. We're going to deal with security. 
we're going to deal with the issue of, of kidnapping. We're going to deal with the issue of, of bandits and so on and so forth. Those are the issues. That's why businesses are not thriving. We're going to deal with ease of doing business. We're going to strip back regulatory um, um, hurdles that we place in front of businesses. We're going to make sure we lower the tax base. Those are the things you do. Look at what Ghana is doing. So more tourism revenue is flowing into Ghana. Ghana reduces tax base. More businesses are going to Ghana. So you don't need to start saying, oh, we're going to paint the school. We're going to give people SIP. Those are the band-aid solutions. They're knee-jerk reactions. Deal with the fundamentals. When you deal with the fundamentals, I'm not saying, that, look, there will always be poor people with us. It's, it's, it's a fact of life. Even in the United States and the UK, there's always poor people. And so you, a government must have a social system, social welfare system, system to yeah. deal with that. But don't make a social welfare system an economic policy. That's where the problem is. So the, the emphasis on making, saying that, oh, the, the economic welfare, the SIP is an economic policy, it's not an economic policy. It's for people who are falling through the cracks. But the most important thing is to make sure that there are no cracks in the first place. Exactly. That you've dealt with the foundation. And that's the point that I'm trying to make. Okay, you, you mentioned something about data. I'm told we have limited time. Yeah. The need for us to work with, you know, having a comprehensive data. And Nigeria has a couple of identification um, uh, missionaries. The other day, I went to Benin to collect my national ID card, and I was told it was going to expire in 2022. And then we have the BVN. Is it possible for us to pursue a, um, a data-based, I mean, revamping our data so we can use it for planning, like, well, for well, situations like this. I've always said um, in different for others, when the telecoms started doing um, biometrics and all of that, I had thought that the government would have leveraged on that to create a national database. The whole thing about national um, ID card has been on. We've had so much embezzlement about funds, I mean funds being embezzled from that scheme and all of that. The new one is the international passport. That one also is another thing. So we need to know how many. You see, the other day I was reading, I, I, was, I was looking at a report where um, UNICEF said about um, uh, is it 19 million children in Nigeria are not accounted for. Why? So it boils down to you cannot plan if you don't have data. So uh, can we can we do it? That's that's can we achieve uh, I mean, it? Like I, I, you said, political will. I'm, 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 do they have know, the political one, will? One thing to do though, it? I, I'll give to this administration in terms of the um, the uh, what we call the National Identification Number Program with the NRIC, I think you're doing well. I mean, that's one of the fundamental things. So it harkens back to what Chilaka says in terms of building the database. That is ongoing, and I'm very I'm, you know. You know, a few days ago, I had an instance. I was doing my uh, pension thing, as a okay. young retiree. Okay. So I, I had to go. They say, "Oh, you must bring your um, national, uh, national ID okay. and national identification number." And I had to go through the process of getting that. So it's now required for all pension bank is tied to your BVN. So I think, in that respect, they're doing very well in in, in building, helping to you know Build to coordinate database. that database. That is ongoing. It's not going to be. It's not a light switch thing. It's not going to just simply happen overnight. But I'm very happy to say that. I mean, um, if there's one thing this administration is doing well, they're doing well in that respect. Um, and and I think it's because also they're using it in terms of the fight for corruption. Another thing they need to do is to tie that to house ownership, make sure that every building in Nigeria has a unique ID number tied to BVN and tied. I think that will also help in the fight against. And, and, and not to uh, seem like I'm being on the side of the government, but if you're talking about this SIP, you, you talked about a lack of data. Couldn't it be that they couldn't use it because we don't have it and they still had to do something to show the people that they have them at heart. What would you prefer? Would you prefer somebody giving you a fish or teaching you how to, how to fish? I'd rather you teach me how to fish, really. That's what we're saying. 500 billion era, put it into the system. Set up cottage industries. But there's biting poverty in the land. When you do that, you will, be, you will see that the poverty itself will run. That's the truth. But if you keep giving people, you're giving them, today you're giving them fish, you're giving them milk, people get lazy. And so that's why government will say, Nigerian youths are lazy. Keep them occupied. National YC is there. The National Youth Service Corps is there. Mm. Why don't you arrange it in such a way that every 
once they're passing out, you, you form a small cooperative, maybe five, ten, five ladies, five guys, you give them a certain amount of money and say, go and start this business. You have consultants who monitor such. That is how to grow the economy. But saying you're giving out money, you're feeding school children who don't have classrooms, who don't have books, there are no libraries doesn't in Nigeria. Cut it for you. It doesn't. No, no, no. It doesn't add up to your anything. final thoughts, sir. I, I, I think there's there's a good there's a good thing. The SIP is good, but the the more fundamental thing is is working towards building an economy that creates more opportunities for growth, more opportunities for employment, and and that you know make sure that we don't um, uh, how should I put it rob Peter to pay Paul because it appears to be what we're doing at the moment. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with Thank us on the program. All right, we'll go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll be looking at Buhari's pledge to better fund Nigeria's judiciary. Just stay with us.